I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when God is our strength. 
Right here, right here. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters there are a roar and be trouble. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, said on. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures. And he leadeth us beside the still waters. He restoreth our soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though he walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for they are with us. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. That prepared the table before us in the presence of my enemies, and that anointed our head before me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I know some says a few, but we come to celebrate the homecoming of Brother Anza Brown Jr., as we call him Jr. And you know, last night the spirit just laid it in my heart, you know. We said June. June was a son. June was a husband. June was a father. June was a grandfather. He was a brother. He was all those things. He was a friend. But we come today to celebrate him. And even though we love him, the community loved him, his family loved him, God loved him best. Yes. So today as we come, we don't want to be sad, but we want to go out celebrate the life of our brother Anza Brown Jr. Amen. Amen. So let's give God a praise. Because God is still in control. And then we're going to have the sacred scripture reading, Old Testament by Minister Johnny Lifford, and New Testament by Minister Mary Davis, and Prayer of Solace by Overseer J. Troy Blackwood. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, getting us ready for that great day, Lord. Oh, getting us ready for that.
Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To the family of June, I know we're going to miss him. I am. Amen. I used to talk to him very often. He would always say, man, what's going on? I said, nothing much. <laughs> but June was a good guy. Yeah. But at this time, we're going to do what they say do. We're going to read the Old Testament. We become from Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 3. For everything there is a season, and every and under at a season and a time for every matter under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which has been planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. May us add peace to the family. And God bless you and we love you. Certainly, our hearts do go out to you, family. Uh, prayers are with you all. I love you all. I will be reading from the New Testament, Revelations 21, verses 1 through 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Wow. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears yeah, from their eyes, yeah, yeah. and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, <coughs> and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give upon him that is thirst of the fountain of the water of life freedom. And he that overcometh shall inherit all these things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. All right. I love you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Let every head be bowed. Let every eye be closed. Eternal and all wise God, our Father, and the Father of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. You are the Father of all mercies, and you are the God of all comfort. The one who comforts us in all of our trials and all of our tribulations that we may comfort those 
in all of their troubles. With the comfort, God, that you comfort us with, we may comfort them you, as well. Lord, at this hour, that is my simple prayer. That is our simple prayer. That you, the God of all comfort, comfort this family now. Comfort my brother now. Wrap your loving arms of protection around them and draw them closer to you. Know God, while you're drawing them closer to you in this hour, draw them closer together as a family. For we who are on the outside do our very best to comfort them, to assure them, to support them. Unless we've been through it ourselves, God, we really cannot understand exactly what they feel now. We can't understand the depth of their sorrow. God, we cannot understand the depth of their pain. But you can. You know what it's like to lose someone that you love. You watch your only begotten son, son whom you love, son in whom you were well pleased died on that old rugged cross God you, you, you know what it's like to suffer loss to suffer pain and because you know God and because you understand we pray that you will give them strength now Give them peace now. Will their weak God be strong for them now? When the cards and the condolences cease, when the fellowship has dissipated and disappeared, only you who would never leave them nor forsake them will be able to give them peace and strength that surpasses all understanding. So we just say thank you now, God, for being wise and being all-powerful. But most of all, God, thank you for being all-loving, loving us in and through our pain until God you bring us you bring us safely on the other side there is another side of pain there is another side of sorrow there is another side of suffering that side is joy that side is peace that side is intimacy with you God so now God I pray that your Holy Spirit will fill and warm each and every heart that's under the sound of my voice. Remind them all of all the precious, the precious, priceless memories that Brother Brown has left behind. And celebrate, celebrate his life, celebrate his love, celebrate the legacy that he has left behind. Bless you, God. Now bless them. In the marvelous and in the matchless name of your son, Jesus was the Christ. Thank you. And give strength to the preacher. Yes. Yes. I mean truly yes. hide yes. today, Lord. Yes. Yes. Use him yes. to your glory, Lord. Yes. Yes. Use him yes. to your glory. Yes. Yes. Where he is weak, yes. Yes. demonstrate yes. That your strength is always yes, made yes, in our weakness. Yes, yes, Give grace today. Yes, yes, to the end, Lord, yes, that all of us, yes, all of us, yes, will be better. In Jesus' marvelous name we pray. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
solo by this Tanisha. Tanisha, I'm sorry, Brown at this time. Yeah. 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but all, but to all men also that love his appearance. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, find comfort in the sweet memories of your father, and know that God loaned him to you, and has now afforded him a home on high. Earth has no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. Respectfully submitted, Overseer J. Troy Blackwell, Senior Pastor, First Lady Kimberly Blackwell, and the Seal Grove Tabernacle of Praise Family. Our loving memories of you will never pass away. And we celebrate the life you have lived on this day. You have done too much good on this earth for us to be left safe. But what you gave to our lives have left us glad. We are glad that God blessed us with someone like you. Someone who was always there to see us through. You have left a beautiful example behind for us to follow each day. And we will remember all the things you told us, those great things that you had to say. Your work and your labels of love will always live. And today we are made better by your living touch and your presence in the lives will be missed so much, the family. At this time, we will have reflections from the family at this time. Good afternoon, family and friends. Good afternoon, family and friends. Good afternoon. We're going to be all right, y'all. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Okay, I'm going to talk about my day for just, I only got two minutes. I'm going to talk about my day real quick. Because there's a lot I can say. I could be with you all day long, but I'm not. Who was June Graham? June Graham was a great father, a great provider, a great family man, and the best husband, a great friend, and a great brother to my Aunt Carol. He was... She, uh, he calls Chitta. That's her nickname, Chitta. So everybody knows that my dad, John Brown, was a man of few words. He, is it anybody here that can raise their hand and say they have ever seen him angry? Okay, it may be a couple, but it won't. <laughs> okay. Anybody in this morning really know me, y'all know I'm a daddy's girl. I never got a whooping. I'm a daddy's girl. I probably should have got some whooping, but I didn't get any whooping. I was a daddy's girl. Dad was my weather man. He was my gossip father. Don't talk to anybody. He was the one that called me when it was going to snow, when it was going to rain, when it was going to do whatever, because I don't look at the news, I don't know what's going on in the news. The one for dad, I didn't know. But I want to say to our family that we are family. That's right. And I want to let you know, you already know this, but I want to remind you that we had a dad for 84 years. Yes. And I know people that don't, haven't had their fathers and their mothers for that long. So we're going to praise God. Can we just praise God today? <laughs> of your father. Amen. Amen. That's right. So I want to say to my family, my prayer is that I'm going to make Bella's So at this time, we're going to have a presentation. The grandchildren are going to do a presentation to mama. But you got to take care of mama. She loves flowers. and this is going to give her something to do where she can be around the house so she can take care of her roses. Mm -hmm. Now, Stephanie, you got anything to say? Um, I want to say that I'm 
Okay, now Breon has something she wants to say real quick. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Um, so, growing up, my mama would always tell me, like, when you leave your family members, you tell them, like, I love you. I don't care if you be there for an hour or a minute, you tell them that you love them. So we moved to the country, and we used to always stay with grandma and grandpa like, every single day. So I would always tell Grandpa, I love you, Grandpa. He'd be like, all right, see you later. <laughs> he would never, ever tell us like that he loved us back. So one day, I was on the phone with him, I was talking to him. And I was like, well, Grandpa, I love you. I had to say it like five times, y'all. Finally, he was like, love you, click. <laughs> but as I got older, I just started to realize like, he knew that he didn't have to tell us all the time that he loved us because he showed us when he taught us, when he checked on us, when he made sure everybody was good. Even if he wasn't good, he still wanted us to be good. And to my family, I love all of y'all, and we're going to get through this together. We're just going to have to stick together, and I promise y'all we're going to get through this. Oh. 
57, I think every time you climb around on the ladder, Amen. somebody takes the one that you just left off. Right. And you ain't coming back down here. That's it. That's it. Amen. Amen. So I want to honor my dad's lone sibling. Chigga, ain't Carolyn. Can y'all give her a God bless you. Please. And I can't go no further until somebody help me give classy 
and the innocence. Hold this dog. Y'all don't know all the real stories we can't tell. <laughs> I want to honor my sister and my brother. Amen. And both my brothers. It's, it's amazing because I had to make some decisions about funeral arrangements, where to go, when to do, what to say, and pray. And I, I had the Lord say, man, you need wisdom. Use it. And when we asked the Sharon Grove Church, could we be here today? Because I didn't want to run my mother down the road. Amen. Sharon Grove said yes. Can y'all give them a big hand? Praise and thank you. Thank you. My family wants to be a blessing to the legacy of this church. And we just want to make sure that y'all keep on keeping on. And y'all give them another hand clap of praise. Thank you so much. Now, I know y'all wonder why Chris is here. I wanted the program to be reflective of daddy and not just pomp and circumstance. I don't go in for all that. I ain't got no show for you. Chris learned how to play in the basement of this, the Sharon Grove Baptist Church from William Henry Toplin. I remember that. Mama sent me up here. Said, you got long fingers, boy. You can play the piano. And Mama sent me up here with Chris and Will here. I stayed one practice, hit one note. And I said, this is for Chris. This ain't for me. All right. Amen. Let me first say thank you, Lord Jesus. I got to give some homage to John Dean, Joe Lewis Wilson, and John Carter. They ain't going to be here today, but three peas in a pod and number buddies. Y'all ain't got to judge my daddy, number buddies. They did by, they really miss him. I want to thank him for being a great friend to my dad. Nobody but the Anderson Heights gang would understand what I'm about to say now. George Carter, Trick June Toplin, and Thomas Jefferson. They can finally sit down at the table for their weekly five up low jack in the game. Because your fourth player has arrived. Every Sunday, June grabbed this spot. Five up. The five up game was on. I want the North Carolina Caswell and Rockingham County family to know my daddy never forgot his roots. Never. Always talked about home. And about two and a half weeks, three weeks ago, Glide and Herman made a visit to daddy. And that thrilled him. He talked about it for days. He was so glad to see them. And we just give honor to all of you who have supported us and we thank you so much for everything that you've done. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 20 and verse 18. I need uh, one of my grandsons or somebody, if y'all will come take this chair and put it in front of that casket for me. Can one of y'all do it for me, please, quickly. 1 Samuel chapter number 20. Verse number 18 and verse number 25. Heavenly Jesus. There was a close friendship between two biblical characters, Jonathan and David. Jonathan said to David, tomorrow is the new moon. 
and thou shalt be missed. Because your seat will be empty. Verse 25 in that discourse continues and says, And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall, and Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. empty. As a text in Job chapter 22 verse 8 it says as but as for the mighty man he had the earth and the honorable man dwelt in it. First mm -hmm. Peter chapter 2 and verse 20 and 21. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for good, for doing good, and you endure it, this is Commendable to God. <clears throat> to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. What do you do? When you know something is missing, But you are bereft, stricken with grief as to knowing how to replace it. You had something for a long time. You know it's missing. But you just can't put it back together. You can't find anything to put in this place to make it as valuable as it was. I'm just being a son right now. Because that missing piece was so distinctive, dignified, and doting. You feel embarrassed to even try to sit where they sit. That's right. I don't think y'all understand what I'm saying. See, I grew up in this area of 612 from the bottom of the bridge to the stop sign. 612. Was nothing but men on this That's road. Right. That's right. Oh, no, no, no. You don't understand what I mean by men. You, 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 you mistaken what I understand by men. See, right across the road was my Uncle George Carter. Uh -huh. They knew how to work all day. Come home and prepare garden all evening. Go to bed late at night. Get up and do it all over. Mr. L. Carter. Chris, you remember this? Mr. L. Carter. Mr. L. Carter didn't have but one arm. Uh -huh. Y'all gonna make me do it now. Mr. L. Carter didn't have but one arm. Had an oak tree in the in the parking lot of where, where him and Miss Lucy were living. Told me and Chris, stop riding them bikes around that tree. Told both of them, stop riding that bike around the tree. Y'all gonna hurt yourself. Mr. L. One arm. One arm, Mr. L. Carter. He missed me, but caught Chris. Caught the bike, Chris, and everything in the bike. And Chris was in the air with one arm. I'm talking about men. I grew up with examples of men. Charlie Wilson, right over here, Mama said, Don't you go to Charlie's house. You know why she told her, Don't go to Charlie's house. There were too many girls at the bottom of that hill. You, you stay. Miss Taylor, you come down there, running back up here. Could go down this. Mr. Charlie Wilson. Charlie Wilson, smooth hair, wavy hair. Charlie Wilson. Well, you couldn't do that with Charlie Wilson. I grew up with watching men. Matthew Williams. That hurt me to my heart. Yes, sir. That hurt me to my heart. And Matthew Williams. And Chubby and all of us grew up together and, and we called him Jabba Joe, Matthew Jr. <laughs> Praise 
gathering. Amen. But it was always in this neighborhood. From King Topley to Ellis to all the way up the road. If anybody on this road had anything they needed to do, it won't one family that helped. I need everybody to holler back at me. It was every family that Oh, y'all want to understand what I'm talking about, dude? I know we're in 2022, and people don't keep their word. But there lies a man. You can talk about it. I'm going to talk about a few things here in a minute. You can say a whole lot about June Brown. You can say whatever you want to say about June Brown. But if June Brown told you he was going to do something for you, June Brown did what he said. Even if it killed him, he was going to get it done. So what are you talking about? The text is here. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Deal with a word that is absent in this house. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. And that word is honor. honor. It's, do, do you know when you give honor to somebody? You don't give honor until somebody accomplishes something that they shouldn't have. All right, all right. That's what you honor people for. Yeah. You, I, I, Khalil, clean up your room. Uh, you don't get no honor for that. That's right. Because I'm paying the rent. I bought the bed. You ain't get no honor for that. But what you do get honor for, Lord have mercy, is when you do something, you accomplish something that you shouldn't have. Oh, I ain't got nobody want to talk to me now. Yeah, that's what honor is. You know, honor is dignity. Yeah. When you are broken down and you are hurting and you still walking around like you ain't got a can of work. You know, people don't like it when you do that. They, they, they want to see you toe down. They want to see you all bent out of shape. They want to see you rolling in the dirt. They want to see you weak and frail. But the dignity is when you ought to be down. When you ought to be rolling in the dirt. You walking around like you still got it all together. I wish I had somebody here. Honor is dignity. It's dignity. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. Honor is, honor is pride. Oh, I know, I know. When some of y'all Bible scholars get me, I know pride going before fall. Joe Brown wouldn't have asked nobody for nothing. That's where I get it from. I will try to kill myself and do it myself before I ask anybody. It's not because I think I'm better. It's just that I don't want to bother you if I can do it myself. I ain't got nobody talking. If I can get it done myself, I just don't want to in involve you. I just I said you go ahead and I'll try to do this. That's what we did. Yes, sir. That's what he taught us. Mm -hmm. That's what honor is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I mean, you had no choice mm -hmm. who you were born to. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You had no choice the place you were born. That's right. I, I got it one for you that's deeper than that. You didn't even get to choose the day you were going to be born on. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. You didn't get to choose who your daddy and your mama was going to be. You had no choice. The context around or the conditions you were born under, you, you had nothing to do with that. So I want to ask you something. What if you were born the son of a sharecropper? Oh, y'all didn't know that June Brown's daddy was a sharecropper? Yeah. Yeah. June Brown's daddy was a sharecropper just, just that much removed from slavery. I ain't got to, Oh, you're going to make me preach that because of that. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, you saw June Brown. But uh, I am, I am just one generation from a sharecropper. Boy, people don't know what you have dealt with in your life when they look at you. They just look at where you are now. 
son of a sharecropper? What if your family experienced extreme poverty and you had to quit school in the sixth grade? My dad didn't have but a sixth grade education. Embarrassed him sometime, Ray, that uh, he had to call his children that he was sending to school to come in and read papers to him. Oh, but nobody know about it. Son of a sharecropper. <laughs> uh, sixth grade education. Most people would laugh at him. Uh, but you better be getting ready to give some honor because I'm going to show you the pen. See, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. What if you went off into an unknown world with difficulties and deficiencies and you still believe somehow I can make it? But everything, all those odds against me, I'm going to pack a bag. I'm, I'm going to make it. With all these inadequacies, insufficiencies, and you still believe that you can make it, that, that's up to you. And if you got all of that stuff before you meet somebody, and now you got nerve that you're going to get married and take a wife. <laughs> make it plain, you, 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 you are poor. You're the son of a sharecropper. Y'all ain't talking to me. You, 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 you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't want to marry a woman and add weight to the weight you already got. Not only that, he said, I can marry a woman and I can sire a children. Yes. Lord, help me have mercy. I can take care of a wife. I can clothe, feed, educate all my children. Keep a roof over my head. Keep food on the table. I know I ain't got no business thinking I can with everything that's working against me. But, but I believe. I believe I can. <laughs> I, 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 you know, tell somebody, I believe you can too. I believe you can. In spite of being born in a culture, society that looked at him as property, oh Lord, looked at him as poor, looked at him as a problem. Y'all ain't talking to me. Oh Lord, but, but, but still believe I can overcome all those odds and still. The Holy Ghost. I love you, Dad. I'm coming now. What if you had a brother who you loved and cherished and his life got snuffed out by tragedy and he had children that he left behind, but you said, I've got my own struggle, but if Ray needs shelter, y'all send Ray on up here. We'll, we'll find some way, somehow. I ain't got nobody talking. No, no, I but you can't find nobody like that today. That you got to feed your children. You got sixth grade education. You got insufficiency. And you got nerve enough to tell somebody that you can sit yours up here too. I'm going to try to make a way for all of them. Oh Lord, help me somebody. You, 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 you don't know what kind of man that it takes. So I'll step in. What if you had a sister All right. that got tripped up by life and became overwhelmed? But you tell her, bring your children and bring yourself and y'all stay in my basement until you get yourself together. Y'all, some of y'all looking like some of the stuff y'all didn't know about you. wife's brother that's been off in war that you can stay here until you get yourself together and get going. Y'all ain't talking. That's, that's who June Brown was. June Brown didn't mind helping nobody, but I'm going to tell you what he did do. He, he kept his mouth closed. He ain't do much talking. He ain't do much talking. He was a shoulder man. He, he, he said, he said, he said, I, I ain't gonna talk a whole lot. He ain't gonna tell you a whole lot. He ain't gonna say a whole lot. But uh, you see it. Of course, you get up here talking about ain't nobody see him angry. We saw him angry a couple of times. <laughs> but somehow, all of those impossibilities, 
in order to make it. Honor is given. It is bestowed because many could not accept or achieve or make it with the odds that he was facing. So what are you going to do with the rest of your life, Dennis? What are you going to do with the rest of your life, man? What are you going to do with the rest of your life, Portia? What are you going to do with the rest of your life, Stefan? All I can do now is give honor. So I want to tell my family, if you want to know why you are where you are today, first is because God was looking over you. But a very close second is because June Brown was given to you. Oh, no, no. You ain't got to clap. That's my dad. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand that uh, uh, Mama came in one day. And Mama said, uh, Dennis is off down there at College Junior. And he done called and said he need a car. And he said, oh, you want me to need a car down there? <laughs> yeah. Dennis needs a car down there. He said, he called and said, need a car. <laughs> Daddy was going to work at 6 o'clock in the morning. He started getting up at 5. He was getting home like 7 o'clock at night. He started riding at 9. One day, after a couple of months, he walks in the house and he said, Tasme, yeah, Joe, call that boy and tell him, come pick his car. Oh, no, I see this 2022 crowd can give him. Ain't say nothing. Ain't tell nobody nothing. But started working hard. He had to get this. Come on. Got car. He uh he became quite amazing to me later years. Because if anybody know anything about my dad. You knew that he was T I G H T with all capital letters. Then I gotta go to prom. Five dollars. Then I gotta go, I gotta go by five dollars. You never get more than five dollars. See, Marvin back there, so me and Marvin got smart, Joe. I'm going to give number five. I didn't give a five. And me, and me and Marvin, you know it won't write. But we went on over to the poker game. We tried to figure out how we're going to make a little more on our five. And Marvin, you sit on that side. I sit over here. If, if I'm doing this, I need clubs. If I'm doing this, I need a heart. Y'all ain't said nothing. I know y'all been saying all y'all was like, sorry, they be the Around. And I messed around here, started walking like it, looking like it, talking like it, and then messed around, got gout like it. I said, that, that you could have kept, you could have <laughs> kept that. Daddy taught me how to endure pain. He taught me how to deal with pain without saying a word. Dad had gout grew so bad that he would moan all night long. We slept in the basement, but we could hear him moaning all night long. Just, oh, oh. Five o'clock, alarm go off. He gets up and hops to work. Y'all ain't talking to me. Hops to work, hops back home. Gets back in the bed and moans all night long. But get back up the next day and hop back on up the American furniture. Sixth grade education now, but never had a job that he won't the boss. Oh, y'all ain't talking up in here. He was the supervisor. 
eyes on every job that they gave him with a sixth grade education. No, that was more than my dad that I even knew. Simultaneously, I'm close. Three things, I'll tell you. Three things. Three things. I'm going to start with the negative because most people start with the positives. You start with the negative. My dad was a mistake-ridden man. He didn't do everything right. He didn't make all right decisions. Later on in life, he started talking to me about it. He would say to a few things, not long, just a few, you don't get but a word or two. <laughs> but he started talking about it. Regrets. Yeah. Oh, child, I got some. You I got some. Right. Oh, 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 Life can beat you down. Yeah. It can put you in a position yeah. that if you don't have all the things you need, it can mess you up. Yeah. Let me hope it goes. Yeah. He was a mistake with man. He was not perfect. He was just prideful and he learned how to overcome pride. But second, he was a mighty man. My dad was strong. He, he was always robust. He was, he was a strong guy. And later on in life, he started to become frail. That, that concerned me. Because I've always seen him with a with a large, strong stature. Yeah, he was never he was never beaten down, but 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 I started to figure out uh, he wasn't beat down because he wanted to be. Right. He was beat down because of me. Okay, y'all ain't talking to me. Most of what he did was not for himself. It was for the people around him. Oh, Lord, I need about 20 people just to holler out. I know that's right. I, it, it takes a mighty man to deny himself and take care of everybody else. Make sure you all right. 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 And never check to see if you're all right yourself. I need about somebody. I need about 10 of y'all. I know it's a pandemic and all. And you really can't do all this touching. But I need about 10 of y'all just to holler. I got to find a man like that. Oh, Lord. I got to find a man. Like I said, I was going to preach. I didn't want to be a son. But something got a hold of me here. And I feel the Holy Ghost. Because I got some things I want to tell y'all the party here. I won't lie to you. My dad was a mistake written man. He was a mighty man. But he wow. A mature man. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Said I won't go do this. This is messing around. You got hold of it. I, I need you to lift your hands and say sooner or later, <laughs> you gotta grow up, child. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> what does it mean to grow up? <laughs> it means to take your mistakes. <laughs> it means to take your past. <laughs> and it means to take it all up <laughs> and say, I gotta leave. Oh Lord, but I'm gonna do better. I beg you to holler better. Oh Lord, I won't lie about it. I don't want to try and embarrass anybody, but I want to know one question: Who would dare to take that empty seat? It ain't just gotta be my family, Joe. It can be your family. Who was that person in your household that held everything together? But now the seat is empty. I gotta ask y'all something. Somebody has got the mature enough to take that seat. I don't want it. I'm scared of it. I don't think I can fulfill it. But somebody has got. That seat Lift your hand And I don't know Hell yeah Now find me Chris I gotta go 
feel I can hold a mouth But a hot shot Wait a minute I hear something From somebody That gave up the seat To Brown Our Lord He messed me up Cause I just called him Two days earlier And Billy Libby is calling Saying Daddy Is in trouble And we believe we've lost him Rock my world But is there anybody here Better lift your hands And say talk to us soon Talk to us before we put you in the ground Talk to us soon We know you're not a top of June But talk to us Before you leave us for the last time Here's what daddy said He said don't forget Through seed Is inside of you Don't forget That if the Lord will help you Find a way Struggle and strain Sacrifice But walk on up To that seed Look at that seed And tell that seed I'm about To shine on Child, yes, you can. You can make it, child. Yes, you can. You got odds against you, but you can make it, child. You might be like me, got a divorce, lost some stuff, had a house taken away, had a car taken away. I know I will not think that I can rise again. But I feel like I can make it Come on, children Don't leave me here, man And, and Lord And take it You can take it, Portia You can take the seat You can take it, Dennis You can take the seat You can take it, Linwood you can take it, Stefan. You can take the seat. Grandchildren, y'all can take it. Lift your hands and say, Y'all can take it. Y'all can take it. You got a seat in you. And you got power that you don't even know that you have. You got power that you didn't even know. Came on this earth with you. I need somebody to shut close that thing up, man. I got to go. But daddy, Lord God, I don't know how I can sit there. Cause I got shame. I got chivalry. And I got some things that I'm not proud of. How can I sit there? He said, step on. I'm going to tell you this before I go. Lord God, do you remember that Saturday morning when you were all teenage boys? Lord God, and I was sitting on Edison's tractor in my garden, and we were getting up potatoes. I know it's Irish. That's what he called it. I call it ice too. He said to get up these ice potatoes. And daddy took the plow and ran it to the end of the garden. Had about four rows. And potatoes were coming up behind the plow. And we thought we were going to go ahead and get up all these potatoes we got them all up start walking towards the house daddy hollered where y'all going we had baskets full we'll put them in the smokehouse lay them on the floor so they can try out my lord I ain't going home 
the Jew told me better. Is there anybody here that'll just lift your hands and say, you thought you were finished? We said, baby, we're done. We're going to the house. We got them all up. Daddy put the tractor in low gear. And daddy hollered at us. Y'all come on back. We ain't finished yet. We said, but daddy, ain't no more potatoes. We done got them all up. He said, no, son. What you don't understand is there's some stuff down that fever. Somebody holler deeper. He said, This time I'm gonna let the plow down a little lower. And then let that big plow down a little lower. Get down beneath and put it in low gear. Snaps out the clutch and potatoes start rolling up. I got clothes. still here, but now you got to go a little deeper, you got to look back over your life and go deeper, cause you get ready to take a seat of honor, that a man didn't have nothing to care you, showed you how, look at him. say nothing. Can I help y'all? Everybody that don't say nothing, don't mean they don't know nothing. I'm going to help you with that and you just watch the one going on the wagon and I'm done. I'll tell y'all how Pete tell you how to be going out here. This is my family. I talk to y'all. They can just listen. I'm the preacher. But I didn't get this message. Viewing the body at the funeral home yesterday, my oldest brother stands up and starts talking. And when he starts talking, God talks to me. So that's your message right there. Didn't come from me. Came from him. Details. problem this society has right now is nobody wants to admit failure. Come on, God. That's all right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Two, three claps in. Because everybody wants to accentuate the positive. Daddy didn't leave us no million. It didn't leave us no houses. You don't need it. All right. But we got, a, we got a son through college. When Lynn was in Grenada, and, and, and they, they, weren't, they didn't call it a war, they called it a conflict. But they were in, he was in battle. It was his ship, the USS Constellation, that they were find the rounds from. I think Ronald Reagan was the president then, I'm not sure. That's the only time in my life I seen my daddy tell my mama 
Pray for my boy. Never saw that before in my life. The only time I ever saw him request prayer was when bombs were going over his son's head. You better hurry up and understand that you are not here alone. You didn't make this journey by yourself. I don't preach. I don't preach to my family. I don't. I don't push him. I don't. No. No, I don't do that. I don't do none of that. I'm not mature. I'm trying to make nobody believe. Do nothing. That's right. No. That's right. They think maybe I should. I don't know. No, let them don't get it though. But I don't. Yes, sir. Because I don't feel adequate. Yeah. I got stuff too. Yeah. I don't know about the ones that admit that. Get better now. But you just gotta lift your hands so I gotta stretch. Gotta get it off of it. So God said, I'm gonna close like this. I'm gonna pray for my for my family. Because nobody knows your family like you know your family. You don't want to say nothing. I know. We got all kind of talent. I've been watching. Got a financier. We got to tap into that. My sister's, my sister's son lived away. And now he's coming back home. I don't want to tell you to business on your own or two, but I'm just watching the details. He moved away, did time and serve, and now he's buying up properties yeah. back home. That's a seed, man. We can waste this. You, you, you talk about me later when you get home. We, we can waste it. But we can take advantage of it. We need to pull Beans kids. We need to pull the other kids. We need to pull the top of the brown kids. We need to pull y'all together. Y'all got stuff and we got to go deeper and get it out of you. I know y'all don't like it. It's too, we got too much and we're wasting it. We got it. These kids are brilliant. Yeah. Let me tell you what happens when people attack each other. You're better than me. I'm better than you. You are absolutely you are nuts. True. Yeah. 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 Do you, I know you say you don't watch the news. I watch it all the time. Right. And they got all of us grouped in this one little pot. Father God, I bless you and I thank you and I give you praise. My dad's gone and his seat is empty. We know somebody's got to take it. Somebody's got to sit in it. We all may have to sit in it. We got to find a way. We got to forge through. We got to pray harder. Because now we got a mama who needs us. More than ever. The burden has just begun. The struggle has just begun. No infighting. I find that devil right now in Jesus' name. No infighting. No finger pointing. I find that devil. You ain't you would not have it here. If I got to die for this one. I thought my daddy could fit for himself, but now I tell you one thing. You mess with Tyson, man, you got problems with me. All right, all right. All right. So, Father, we need you now. Yes, sir. Strengthen us. Yes, Lord. Guide us, lead us. Yes, Lord. Give us wisdom when we need it. Yes, Lord. Bless us now in Jesus' name. 
And if anybody got anything today, just clap your hands and give God praise. And say, yes, go, Papa. Everything's going to be all right. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.